Your skin crawls as the hollow barking echoes throughout the caves once more. You're not sure what could possibly be making such a sound, but whatever it is, it's getting closer. Welcome to the first ever Monster of the Week, where we will be talking about these guys. The Destrochin, or Destrochan. Destrochin. I'm excited to be talking about these guys, because they're a monster that doesn't really get a whole lot of use, and I think they're super cool. So, what are they? They are large, intelligent creatures with no eyes that communicate through echolocation and use sonic attacks. How awesome is that? According to the monster manual, they're found in the Underdark, but you could reasonably use them in any cave system, whether it's inside of a mountain or under the ground. Basically anywhere a bat would live. They're deadly, and they hunt in packs. They're basically blind raptors, which is kind of awesome. So, let's talk about what kind of abilities these guys have, and then we'll get into modifying them and see if we can make them a little bit cooler. So the most recent printing of Destrochins is in 4th edition. There's also a version of them in 3.5 as well. Now, they're relatively the same, but for the sake of converting them into 5th edition, we're going to be looking at the ones from 3.5. But we are going to take a quick look at 4th edition because it does contain a really cool ability that isn't present in 3.5. So, first things first, let's talk about their sonic abilities. So they can open up their giant mouths, revealing rows of razor sharp teeth, and release a sonic blast that can have one of three effects. These guys can actually attune their sonic attacks so that they affect a different type of matter. So they can have it affect flesh, which causes every creature caught in the blast radius to take 4d6 damage, of course taking half of that on a successful reflex save. Or they can affect the creature's nervous system and cause it to be knocked unconscious. Now there are two different versions of this, and depending on what version of the game you're playing, different versions work in different ways. In 3.5, this attack deals 6d6 non-lethal damage. However, I think a more elegant solution to this is to just have the players make a constitution save. If they fail, they're knocked unconscious. I think this makes more sense with the flavor of the creatures themselves, and also if one of your players sees another player go down after one of these things screams at it, it's going to create a lot of intensity. Now the third way they can use their attack is to affect material. Basically they get to choose either wood, stone, metal, or glass, then all the objects in the blast radius have to make a fortitude save or be destroyed. If you're playing in 5th edition, then the objects would just take a certain amount of damage. So you're already probably starting to get a few ideas on how to use destructions in your adventures. It makes for a very diverse and interesting creature. And because they're intelligent, it's not like they're just mindlessly doing attacks. If the paladin, say, who has full heavy armor and a massive shield is getting in the way of one of these creatures getting to their prey, he's going to destroy his shield or even possibly his armor. And when you take away an object like that from a player, it, again, really creates a sense of intensity. Now it does say they prefer to attack at range, so basically you have an encroaching circle of monsters that if the players get too close to, they're going to be knocked unconscious or have their weapons destroyed. Maybe. This is a great creature to really catch your party off guard. Not that the objective is to kill the party, of course. But it really might make the place they're in seem a little bit more dangerous than they had originally anticipated. Now onto a couple of interesting features about them outside of combat. Obviously they have blind sight, so they can effectively see without having eyes. This is of course because they have echolocation much like bats. They're immune to gaze attacks, because without eyes, there's nothing to gaze into. And they also have protection from sonic damage. This is because they can actually attune their ears and block out certain noises and either choose to hear more or less. A very handy ability. But they are not immune to sonic attacks, nor are they immune to sound, which gives these guys one very interesting weakness that I think is a very cool puzzle in combat for the players to solve. If you manage to deafen one of these things, they are also effectively blinded. So if one of your players has a thunderstone or access to a spell that can cause deafness, it's going to make this encounter a lot easier. And if you set it upright by making sure the players know going into combat that these things use echolocation to see, it can be a really rewarding combat puzzle for your players to solve. Now, they do have claws, but the monster manual does specify that they're mostly used for traversing their home. They're only really used in combat as an absolute last resort. Now, on to actually creating encounters with these guys, they have a lot of potential to be very cool enemies depending on how you set it up. It's one thing for your players to just stumble into a den of these things when combat ensues, 
But given their intelligent nature and the fact that the players are most likely in their environment, it's very likely that they would be stalking the players and be setting up an ambush. I've used these guys before and it's awesome to see the players try to figure out what these ominous barking noises are they hear echoing through the caves or coming off of the wind while they're on the side of a mountain. It's not only creepy, but it also gets the players thinking, what do we need to be prepared for? What is that sound? Anytime you can make your players think, you're doing a good job. And this brings us on to one of my suggested modifications. In 4th edition, they also had an ability called Mimicry, which basically allowed them to mimic the sounds of their environment. The monster manual specifically says that they can use this ability to mask the sound of their footsteps. So while they're creeping up on the party from behind, maybe they're mimicking the sound of water dripping from the ceiling or rocks falling off the nearby cliff, just so that they can mask their steps and get closer to the party. I think that's such an interesting ability. If you use this feature right, it can add another layer to the puzzle. Maybe they're mimicking water dripping from the ceiling, yet the players know it hasn't rained in days. Which just raises further questions, which is exactly what you want. Now I would almost take this ability one step further. Maybe not all Destroshan have this ability, but perhaps the pack leader who's been alive for a very long time and has seen many groups of adventurers pass through his territory. He could have developed a knack for mimicking human speech in this time. Or possibly he's been stalking the party and listening to them, and if the party is split up he then mimics one of the voices of one of the players crying out for help. This can be extremely creepy, and also if you couple that with the buildup beforehand of these strange noises coming through the cavern, the party's not going to know what to expect. I think this works, because the monster manual does specify that Distraction can understand common. They just communicate with each other through action rather than words. So they can understand what the players are saying, they just communicate in a very different way. They also make perfect villains because it specifically says that they are evil and sadistic and often enjoy toying with their prey, which really ties in with this whole atmosphere of mimicry and deceiving the party. Now, like I said, you can find these guys both in 3.5 and 4th edition, however Wizards of the Coast has not officially transported them to 5th edition just yet. That said, there is a great resource called Demon Gnome's Manual of Monsters that converts a lot of the monsters that didn't make it into 5th edition over to 5th edition. The Destraction is in this manual, so I'll drop a link to that below in the description. One last thing I'd like to touch on is that these monsters are intelligent and typically evil aligned, so you don't necessarily have to limit them to solitary packs. Maybe they've teamed up with some mind flayers and are serving as their mounts. It does say in the book that they will align themselves with other creatures if they feel that they will benefit from the relationship as well. I can't think of any better monster for a mind flayer to mount than that, can you? Plus, they're from the Underdark. So hopefully you found this video helpful and interesting. If you get a chance to use these monsters in your campaign or you've used them in the past or maybe your DMs use them on you, leave a comment below and tell me about your experience with them. And as always, if you did enjoy this video, make sure to subscribe. We have a new Monster of the Week video coming out every week. I've also got other videos like reviews, general tips for DMs and players, and all kinds of cool stuff. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next week.